Today's topic is going to be kind of an introduction to uh, vocabulary associated with um, sex, sexuality, and um, all the intersections in there. But first, uh, we are going to go to news story. Um, hey, Jamie. Mm-hmm. I hear that, or I should say, I heard tell that the best source Gardas- of information. I know, right? <laughs> the uh, Gardasil vaccine mm-hmm. causes young women to be, or even girls, <gasps> to be promiscuous. Won't someone think of the children? Oh, so, no. um, fun. So, and please, please tell me. So, so interesting, me. Uh, interesting news on this. Um, false and wrong. No. Um, this really? Will, this will surprise you, but uh, specifically, the things that I found say that the legislation and openly talking about the HPV vaccine and sex does not uh, increase the sexual behavior of teens. Are you saying that they were going to have sex anyway? Well, I mean, uh, that that conclusion is supported by uh, the findings of this study. So some might even say that, uh, yeah, science, science uh, now provides more evidence that teens want to have sex. Hey! <laughs> Just in case anyone wasn't clear on that. <laughs> Glad there was proper research done on yep. the subject. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, so to, to clarify the, what we're talking about here, the, the Gardasil vaccine is meant to prevent HPV. HPV mm-hmm. yeah. A lot of folks uh, are getting it as early as 9, 10, In 11 well, years yeah. old. Well, the recommended like, age is, is probably it, around 12 I, or 13. I, I heard, I've heard mm-hmm. 12. Um, so basically what I've heard is 12. You think they're going to start having sex at 12, um, which I, you know, I do not have a medical expertise uh Whatsoever. However, I do have the basic understanding that you if provide immunization, a preventative, before um, there's exposure to the viral infection that you're attempting to prevent. So I think the idea you that... You mean like the flu vaccine? <gasps> yeah, you get that before you start hacking and coughing and huh. s- snot. It's not I'll allow it. I'll yeah. Allow. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's, it's nodding. It has been allowed. The court precedent has been set. It's nodding. This, it's a it's a new word. Yeah, I was gonna say, in the court of sex, this is permitted. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's it's one of these things. It's a, it's an interesting meme, particularly in U.S. Uh, society, that oh no no, if you put out legislative barriers or provide mm-hmm. education, that's mm-hmm. gonna make people. Um, more uh, prone to engage in that activity. So you see this kind of thinking with um, needle exchange programs. Mm -hmm. People say, oh, it will increase heroin usage. No, it decreases uh, diseases that can be transmitted. Yeah, and death related to Suicide is another place where we talk about this a lot, uh, where if somebody's going through a depression and and maybe you have some concerns, there's this fear that, oh, don't ask them about suicide. Don't put that that thought in their head, and then you'll, they they won't be able to avoid it. And You will incept the idea of suicide into their mind. And the research just doesn't support that. Uh, people no. are already having sex. People are already thinking about suicide. And getting these things out into the open, from what you're saying, is not making the problem worse? No. It, funny thing. Um, speaking Educate. openly, <laughs> educating people and providing people with uh, medical preventatives to stop the spread of diseases, surprisingly doesn't make people engage more frequently in uh, high-risk behaviors. Hmm. What, do you, what do you know? Yeah. It's almost as if the data proves that better sex education reduces the number of uh, abortions required. Yeah. Mm. Uh, anyway. We live in a world where that's controversial. What I would say is it's so, it's almost like when people have a better idea of what they're doing, they're less likely to do something stupid. Yeah. It's I would, well I said, would say actually. That. Thank yeah. you. Simple and straightforward. I like it. That's why you had me here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so on that note, I guess we'll move to, uh, well, welcome, Jamie. Thank you. Happy to be here. And uh, Christy, do you on. have a question for Jamie? Yeah, I mean, so we're, we're here today, uh, we're here every week, you know, talking about gender and sexuality, talking about mm-hmm. uh, safety, relationships, love, sex, all of it. Um, mm, those and, are things I have. Right? So. Yeah. Uh, and How dare you? 
to varying amounts. So. <laughs> you know, we, I mean, Megan and I, of course, believe that you know this is a, a valuable thing to be doing, to be talking about these things, to be sharing information, to be uh, getting the word out there, and then just making people feel less uncomfortable in talking about these things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's part of what we're doing today, going through uh, a lot of different vocabulary so that we have the words in which to talk about these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but from a bigger picture, why is it that the atheist community of Austin wanted to put a show like this on? I mean, what was uh, the decision process like, and, and what is it that you're hoping that we'll be doing here? So, there's a bit. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, he does that to me yeah. all the time, so. Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> to be clear, you mentioned that I, I am the president. You are uh, the director of operations of Indeed the ACA, I am. so you, you do contribute to the organization. Aww. Um more than just uh, hosting a <laughs> hosting a uh, a a bomb ass show. If I can say so. <laughs> thank you, um, do what we can. Co-hosting, sorry. Right. Um, There's no cussing, Jamie. A bomb. Shit, this is going to be a difficult show. Fuck. I know. And we're totally, <laughs> totally up shit creek without a fucking paddle. But um, what I <laughs> so the this is why my mom doesn't watch. By the way, ow. Uh, yeah. My mom watches my show, and that has been interesting. Oh, I can't um, believe it. Wonderful dinner conversation, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's expressed concerns. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so the mission of the ACA uh, is directed uh, in part, you know, it is the atheist community of Austin, so issues that relate to and pertain directly to atheists um, and uh creating community for people in Austin. And one of the things that's necessary for a functioning, thriving, and happy community is a society that understands why that community exists, who's in that community, and that is okay with the idea of that community existing, which means that a lot of the programming that we produce um, not only reaches out to atheists and tells them, you're not alone, we're here too, and we're here to help you, but it also reaches out to people that do believe or people that don't believe but would say that they're agnostic or don't understand why anyone would call themselves an atheist and say, no, here's the reason why. Look, um, a lot of religious ideas and religious institutions have pushed and promoted uh, a whole host of bad ideas um, and unsupported, uh, unscientific thinking on a whole host of issues. And one of those issues in particular is the idea of sex and sexuality and that there's something wrong with you. Um, One, that you are broken from the beginning. I'm speaking now Mm -hmm. in particular of uh, Christianity as it's practiced in America, that you are broken, that your nature, that human nature is the nature of a fallen creature and that you should feel guilt and shame about the things that you think or feel. Um, Admittedly, as an atheist that is also gay, uh, the idea that anyone should feel guilty or shame because of the way they were born uh, is something that I can very easily recognize as abhorrent and damaging. And so one of the things that I think is a hopeful goal for this show is to lessen that as an effect, particularly for an activity that the vast majority of the human population wants to engage in and can find enjoyable. The rumors are false. Women can enjoy sex. Um, really? Yeah. So I've heard. But um, the, <laughs> uh, uh, um, the reviews have been a little mixed on my side of things. Can you can you confirm this? Uh, yes, I can confirm this. Uh, uh, it takes the right touch. Oh, that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> But what I will say is I'm, I'm very excited that there is a show that addresses a very specific subject. So um, the first program that the ACA ever produced or, or sponsored mm-hmm. and kind of the flagship is The Atheist Experience, which was just generally, let me tell you about the experience of what it's like to be an atheist and why that's okay. Mm-hmm. Call in, bring in your subjects, and hosts, in, particularly in the early days, would bring in subjects that they wanted to talk about but on an episode-by-episode basis. Mm-hmm. So for the most part, they were there and they were talking because they were the people that were willing to, um, and they have uh, have had and still do have a, a variety of levels of expertise, but people are here and are hosts of shows because they're willing to be activists, and so being able to have someone who this is their field of study and mm-hmm. they have you know personal experience and expertise on these issues is something that I think greatly benefits the mission and operations of an educational nonprofit. And so for us to be able to provide not just something that's entertaining 
um, and not just something that's educational, but something that has a very specific focus, particularly that American society has a huge number of taboos about mm -hmm. whatsoever, right? There are still people that are born and being raised and young today that are taught never to say the words penis or vagina or sex mm -hmm. ever because they're entirely... They're your naughty bits. Yeah, and they're entirely <laughs> taboo. Your, um, you know, tally whacker or... Actually, I've forgotten all the euphemisms because now <laughs> I just say dick. But, um, and I, for whatever reason, I was never as interested in learning the euphemisms for vagina. So I can't just didn't come up, think huh? why. Yeah. I mean... Although I've heard that that is a problem that many people It is. It's one through. that comes yeah. up a lot, yeah. Yeah. So that not coming up is a problem that comes <laughs> up quite, quite often <laughs> and that no one should be ashamed or embarrassed about. So to, to bring it to a close educating people about sex and sexuality and informing them that no one should be ashamed to be who they are and that no one should be ashamed to ask questions and want to know more um, and that no one should be ashamed to learn, wow, that thing I was taught as a kid is totally bullshit, um, falls perfectly in line with the mission of the atheist community of Austin. Absolutely, and we're excited to be a part of that. And uh, in talking about how uncomfortable we are with these sexual taboos and even talking about the word sex, 